I love The Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time. As a matter of fact, as cliche as it sounds, it might be one of my favorite games of all time. Now, I'd grown up playing the original Legend of Zelda as a kid, a little bit, like on friends, you know, cousin systems, but I hadn't really gotten into Zelda until the year before this game came out, with Link to the Past on Super Nintendo. But when Ocarina of Time came out, all my friends in my apartment complex and I got it around the same time, so we got to explore this fascinating world together. And I'm not just talking about the dungeons and the wonderful iconic moments, I mean, this game taught me more than any other how a 3D game world is constructed because, when you get right down to it, this game has glitched out the ass so much. And I used to love trying to find ways to exploit this game. Now, I'm not going to pretend I made these up myself. I used to scour websites like the now defunct Odyssey of Hyrule when I was a kid. So, this is all stuff I found growing up, but I wanted to share it all with you today in case you didn't know about some of these. And since this game has been re-released and reported and remade many, many times, most of what I'm going to show you today can only be done on an original release version. And while I've heard that there are some gray cartridges that might have been released with the original batch, the easiest way to know for sure is if you have a gold cartridge. So for the most part, these can only be successfully accomplished on a gold cartridge. So let's get started. First, you have to have reached the end of the game. Remember when Ganondorf transforms into Ganon and knocks the Master Sword out of Link's hand? Before you do anything else, go into your menu and save. Now, whether you immediately reset or go ahead and beat the game, the next time you turn it on, you'll start in Ganondorf's tower and you still won't have a sword equipped. Oh, it'll still be in your inventory, don't worry about that. You haven't lost your Master Sword forever, it just won't be usable from your B button. What's the big deal about that, you ask? Well, aside from the very beginning of the game and the fight against Ganon, the game never expects you to not have a sword. So when you're doing something like, say, riding a Pona, where the B button command transfers to the bow and arrow, the game gets really confused. Since it doesn't read anything equipped to the B button, it stays blank even when you're riding a Pona. And for some reason, that allows you to use almost all of your C button items while riding a Pona, something you'd normally never be able to do. Ever wanted to ram your hookshot through a Pona's head? Now you can. How about using the Lens of Truth? With this little trick, you can even cast Pharaoh's Wind outside of dungeons. Unfortunately, even if you equip a magic arrow, it'll still only fire a regular arrow. But that's only the tip of the iceberg. Did you notice that when I cast Pharaoh's Wind, Link automatically dismounted Epona? There are several C button items that require Link to perform an animation that is incompatible with riding a horse. These include dense fire, Deku nuts, and playing the ocarina. When you use any of these, Link will dismount Epona, but the game will think you're still on her. So you'll control both of them at the same time. All you have to do is press A, and Link will remount the air wherever he is, and eventually the game will catch up and bring you back to Epona. Personally, when doing these tricks, I prefer to use the ocarina since you can use it an unlimited number of times. Here's a fun trick to try. While riding Epona, activate the ocarina and play Saria's song. All of a sudden, Link is several feet in the air, and he'll stay that way even after you quit playing. Talk about riding bareback. However, if you leave the area, you'll lose Epona and have to summon her again. So now we've covered the basics. Ready to see how this lets you do some really crazy stuff? Well, did it ever bother anybody else that even after you beat the Water Temple, Zora's Domain stays frozen? It remains completely deserted and you can never get under the ice. Even the underwater passage in Lake Hylia is frozen. Well, let's see if we can do something about that. Take Epona to Lake Hylia, ride to the patch of land above where the warp point is, and line up Epona right to the edge of where she can walk, facing the lake. Use the ocarina to dismount. Equip the iron boots. Now very slowly walk forward so that Epona will walk in place, but not get spooked and automatically back up. Walk all the way to the edge and fall to the bottom. As soon as you land, press A to remount. It'll warp you directly under Epona, but before the game catches up and places you on Epona, press start and change back to your regular boots. The state change to swimming will override the mount command, so you'll find yourself swimming underneath the game world. Turn around and you'll see that you're now behind the warp to Zora's domain. And this side isn't frozen. Alternate between the iron boots and the kokiri boots to stay at the right depth. And if you do it right, you'll find yourself under the ice in Zora's domain. If you enter the warp while wearing regular boots, make sure you switch to iron boots as soon as you get to Zora's Domain, or you'll quickly surface above the ice. Now you can finally explore all those places you never could, like... Uh... 
Well, when I was a kid, there was always a rumor that the Triforce was hidden in this inaccessible alcove. And it, it's not. There's gotta be a reason this perfect crevice exists though, right? Who knows? But if you want to leave, just go back up to the surface. Here's another fun one. Take Epona back to Lon Lon Ranch and play Malin's hurdle jumping game. When it starts, use the ocarina to dismount and then play the Song of Storms. Holy crap! You're making Jimi Hendrix proud with that purple haze. Why does this happen? I have no idea. But maybe you want to use this great power for something useful. Ever had trouble with the Gerudo archery course? Start up the game, line up your shot, and use the ocarina to dismount. Now you can ditch the stupid horse and just fire arrows in place. The perspective is a bit difficult to get used to, and he tends to want to drift down, but once you get the hang of it, check out those high scores you rack up. Just make sure you hold down the Z button to target, otherwise for some reason Link will freeze in bow and arrow mode until the minigame ends. If you don't care about the score, you can dismount during the game and just leave. The Gerudo Fortress will be deserted, the gate to the training ground will be gone, and if you go inside, it'll take you to a random part of the fortress. But even when you come back after the minigame ends, the worker will still make fun of you for not scoring any points. And if you abandon the game and make it all the way to the Haunted Wasteland, your score counter won't go away. Ever want to play the game through Link's eyes? If you ride Epona, throw a Deku Nut, bring out your hookshot, and then immediately throw a Deku Nut again, you'll go into a quasi-first-person perspective. You're inside Link's face! Now it's time for the big leagues. This is very simple, but the most fun, and gives you the greatest insight into how 3D game worlds are constructed. Head to Lake Hylia or Gerudo Valley. Take out your hookshot and fire into an acceptable target. The game isn't programmed to let you latch onto objects while on horseback, so the chain will just stick there. Now press A to leave first person mode and dismount the horse. Now I don't need an ocarina dismount, just a regular A button dismount. Whoa! Rather than pulling you to the object, it just levitates you in the air! And now you can go practically anywhere. The chain will continue to stretch and as long as you don't touch the ground, which will get you stuck, you can travel as far as you want, even far outside the boundaries of the area. Lake Hylia is a more enclosed area, but if you go to this point, a Gwei will smack into you, break the hookshot connection, and fling you over the wall. Now you're swimming outside of the game world. When the sun sets, it just hangs out underneath the ground. That's just good science. If you want to return, just come back in through a wall. Solid objects are only solid in one direction. If you want to go back to normal, just go back to your point of origin, and it rockets you up in the air. So maybe you've been watching this video, and you've been thinking to yourself, Man, I have a great cartridge, or I have the GameCube version. I wish there was some way that I could exploit the game's world, too. Well, don't worry, because I got you covered with these next couple of tricks. Now, I've tested these on the GameCube version, so I know they work there, and logic would dictate it would work on the Virtual Console as well. Now, I don't own a 3DS or the remake on that system, but chances are it's not going to work on those. The first one is pretty simple. Go to the entrance to Ganon's castle and hop on over to the right side of the door. Take out your hook shot and BAM! They didn't intend you to do that. As they say in Camelot, it's only a model. The interior is an entirely separate element, and there's nothing to look at but the lake of lava below. Finally, this one is fairly simple in concept, but can take a lot of patience to actually pull off. Go to the same area, but as a kid. Did it ever bother you that you never really got to explore Hyrule Castle? Oh, you got to futz around in the courtyard, but that was it. Time to go where the game doesn't want you to go. Head over to the corner just left of the Dens Fire Fairy Fountain. <laughs> Try saying that three times fast. Now, we want to climb up this hill, something that's normally impossible. But if you look closely at the hill, you can see the seam where two polygons meet, its fatal flaw. If you align yourself perfectly and walk towards it, Link will straddle the two halves of the hill. But that was the easy part. Now you have to keep yourself aligned while walking up the rest of the hill. Link can fall at any time, and usually will. Go into first person mode where you can see the seam in much greater detail, and try to line it up with your sword icon. Then walk as slowly as you can up the hill, stopping often to realign your position. After a lot of frustration and a bit of luck, you'll make it up the hill. And you can see how little the game developers expected you to see of Hyrule Castle. It's not even finished! But that's not why we're here. We want to get inside. Head over to the very back of the area. 
you'll see a tiny strip of hill, but you can't walk on this one. You'll just fall straight down. You have to position yourself on the edge of the world, change direction, and walk as far as you can. Yeah, one false move and you fall into nothingness and have to start all the way over again. Admittedly, I'm many years out of practice, but this whole process took me nearly an hour to perform successfully. The goal is to get all the way behind the castle, or more specifically, behind the grate for the moat. One of the times I failed was because I didn't go far enough and just ended up back in the game world. This requires practice and patience. But once you get far enough, take a leap of faith, or just stupidly fall at the right time like I did, and you'll land in the water and be able to swim to and surface inside Hyrule Castle. So worth it. Well, I hope you enjoyed exploring Ocarina of Time with me today. Hopefully you explored it in a way you never have before. And uh, be sure to comment below. I know there are tons, tons of glitches I didn't go over today. So, hey, feel free to share your own. And if you liked what you saw and want some more Nintendo zaniness in your life, check out this review I did of an episode of the Super Mario Bros. Super Show. It was from several years ago, but it was a lot of fun. And if you're a Dragon Ball fan, be sure to check out the ongoing review and analysis series I have of that called Dragon Ball Dissection. Well, see you guys later.